The April 2022 flood in Durban is regarded as the deadliest in the country's history in terms of the impact on human life. It followed two days of persistent heavy rainfall on the 11th and 12th of April that year, which led to 544 deaths, displaced more than 40,000 people, destroyed infrastructure and cost more than 50 billion rand. Some weather stations recorded 300 millimetres of rain in just 24 hours, while Durban's average rainfall for April is only 90 millimetres. The researchers developed a kilometre scale attribution simulation model and compared today's warmer world with the pre-industrial cooler world of the late 1970s. And what we have found is that climate change has indeed made the Durban floods much worse than they were supposed to be. So rainfall during these two days were about 40% up to 107% 107% higher than what it was supposed to be. He says while other reports noted that extreme weather events can become more frequent and more intense due to climate change, these findings suggest a pronounced role of climate change in making the rainfall event in April 2022 more intense. Engelbrecht says climate change is increasing flood risk along South Africa's east coast, particularly in KwaZulu-Natal and in the northern part of the Eastern Cape. According to the study, the event was driven by three key factors, namely a warmer atmosphere, which holds more moisture when fueled by greenhouse gases, a warmer gullus current, which increased ocean evaporation and fed moisture into coastal storms, and changes in wind patterns, which funneled more moist air into KwaZulu-Natal. Engelbrecht says South Africa should have been better prepared for the possibility of a mega flood in Durban. We need to become much better in South Africa in terms of evacuating people out of the path of harm. We need to learn how to evacuate several thousands of people, maybe 10,000 people, within one or two days out of the path of an approaching storm and flood event. Now our neighboring country Mozambique is managing this quite often, that they can evacuate up to 50,000 people out of the path of an approaching tropical cyclone. And so we say we need good early warning systems to give us an early anticipation of an upcoming flood event. And then we need to have mechanisms in, in place, including good disaster management interactions and trust of the communities in disaster management. He says if attribution science can show that a flood was made significantly worse by climate change, this can help developing countries receive assistance to rebuild and adapt. However, he says the world needs the leadership of the USA and China, who together represent 40% of the world's emissions. So these two powerful economies really have our future in their hands in the sense that they are the economic blocks that can achieve a so-called just transition away from our dependence on fossil fuels towards the renewable forms of energy, thereby slowing down global warming and eventually stopping it. But for as long as the United States and China remain heavily invested in fossil fuels as a key source of the energy mix, global warming is going to continue. We are going to see extreme weather events increasing even more in their frequency of occurrence across the world. Extreme weather events will get even more intense. And the countries that are going to suffer most are the developing countries of the world. The countries that do not have the infrastructure and the financial means to protect themselves against these increasing impacts from extreme weather events. Engelbrecht says that long-term adaptation is necessary, which will include the challenging and costly exercise of relocating communities who live below the flood line to safer areas. Renee Heiner, SABC News, Durban.